daytime, I'm just a normal senior producer. But at night, I become Heinrich von Schnitzel, Commandant in the National Army! Hi, my name is Ben Cousins, I'm the senior producer on Battlefield Heroes, and you're watching TVGrill.pl. Battlefield Heroes is a new game in the Battlefield series. Uh, it's for PC, it's a free download on the web, it's completely free to play. It's aimed at running on a low system spec machine, so if you've got a 1 gigahertz CPU, 512 megabytes of RAM and an integrated graphics chip, the game will run for you. And we want to introduce that to a new audience by reducing, removing some of the barriers to entry. So you don't need to buy the game, you don't need to be super skilled because we match make you with people of similar skill level, you don't need a super high end PC. And why did you decide to make it a free game, a free download? We actually, that was the first decision we made. The first decision we made was let's make a free game. And we looked at a business model which had become very successful in Korea, in South Korea, um, for games like Sudden Attack, Special Force, Maple Story, Kart Rider. Um, and this is something that kind of popped up by accident over there, but has been really successful. And this is a type of game where 95% of the people who play it don't spend any money at all, and a small proportion of kind of loyal customers, they buy items to kind of enhance their experience. So we've got two main ways of making money, of paying for the game. The first one is advertising in the website and in the in-game menus. So you have to go to the website to log in and launch the game. So we'll be getting advertising hits there. And also in the in-game menus, they kind of look like web pages anyway, so we've put banners there. But we don't have any plans to put posters or billboards in the fictional world itself because I don't think it would fit to have modern um, items in this cartoony world. The second source of revenue is uh, microtransactions. Um, really it's up to the community to define what kind of things they buy, but we think there'll be two uh, main types of items which sell well. The first one is the aesthetic customization items, a new helmet, a new pair of glasses, a new pair of gloves that just make your character look cool. And the other one is what we call convenience items. So let's say both of us are playing the game, you're playing every day for four hours and you're leveling up your character quite quickly. I only have time to play it at the weekends, so I'm kind of lagging behind you. What I can do is buy an item which gives me double experience points for that weekend, so I can spend that time catching up with you on the level. So I still have to play the game, I still have to be skilled, but I just get, um, I level up my character slightly quicker. So you start off, it's different from other Battlefield games, you can't change your faction or your class, you kind of pick a guy, uh, a war hero at the start of the game, you give him a name, um, you give him a character class and a faction, and then as you play the game you collect experience points from damaging enemies and from capturing flags. Those experience points will unlock new levels, and at each new level you'll be unlocking new abilities. And we've got the system of abilities, they're kind of like spells in an MMO. It will heal you, make your weapons more powerful, uh, give you the ability to see people or mark targets. Um, so as you play the game you'll be unlocking new abilities and then leveling up those abilities as well. So we've almost got an MMO or an RPG feel to the game. So what we've created is a system of matchmaking which means that you'll only ever be playing against people of a similar skill level to you. So if I've just started playing the game I'll only be match made with people who are, who've also just started playing the game. If I'm like a level 50 character and I'm really skilled, I'll only be playing against those level sort of 50 or, or similar skilled characters. So that way we kind of make it easier for the guys who've just joined the game because uh, they don't get their ass kicked by skilled players but also if you're a skilled player you don't get put in servers full of noobs who are saying how do I do this, how do I do that. Yeah we've got plans for leaderboards, not just a global leaderboard but we want to look at leaderboards for each faction, for each class and possibly even local leaderboards. So if I live in a, a particular city I can see where I compare against other people in my city. Uh, each, each, each faction and, uh, is basically identical uh, in, in terms of the classes on each side, yeah. Certainly when we launch the game there will be no differences between the Royal Army and the National Army. It's just about who do you think has the cooler uniform. We work really hard on balancing and we're in the balancing phase of the game now and it's one of our main focuses. One of the things we really wanted to do was to stop some of the vehicles being so powerful. Uh, in BF2 the aircraft were overpowered in my opinion. So we've worked really hard to make the planes quite, it's quite hard for a plane to take out infantry for example. And the infantry can shoot back and damage the planes quite heavily. Similarly with tanks, uh, in previous Battlefield games the tanks are extremely hard to kill if you're an infantry character. So what we've done is given every player class sticky bombs. They can stick a bomb to a tank which will blow it up. So everyone has a way of, of, of attacking a tank and the tanks consequently are less powerful but they're still really good fun to, to drive and to use the gun with. 
It's funny, people think automatically that, that we've been influenced by Team Fortress 2, but you know, this game has been in development for a while and, and there, there really wasn't any uh, details about Team Fortress 2 when we decided on our art style. I'd hate to think that any one company uh, has the right to make cartoon shooters, and I'd like to think that there will be 50 cartoon shooters eventually. Um, so we didn't want to, we didn't let that uh, similarity stop us continuing in the art style that we really believe in. There's three main reasons for us doing uh, this art style. First one is that we want the game to look good even on a low-end PC. And if you've got a realistic art style, as soon as you drop the texture resolution, things start looking really bad. But with a cartoony art style, you can actually drop the resolution of things and the game still looks good. So that was one reason. The other reason is because we wanted to communicate that the game was fun. Uh, so that when you see a screenshot, you understand it's going to be easy to get into and a fun game to play. And the third reason is that the team kind of really wanted to have a change uh, and take a break from the realistic graphics of BF2 and 2142. You know, and the alternative for us would be to do yet another gritty realistic World War II game, which I think everyone's a little bit fed up with by now.